Good evening. I'd like to call to order the January 26, 2017 meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District Trustees. Um, I'd like to explain that uh, David Hughes, our superintendent, will not be with us tonight. He came down sick uh, at about 6 o'clock and called me to let me know that he was in dire straits. And uh, I asked him, please don't come tonight. We'll try and <laughs> flounder our way through things uh, Without him, it's been a long time since we've had a meeting without the superintendent here. Um, so, with that explanation, we'll move to roll call. Ben Viola. Here. Joseph Carroll. Here. Jason Greenleaf. Here. Rob McSorley. Present. Nick Rico. Here. Aubrey Strauss is absent. She called and notified us that she was sick this evening. And I'm Charles Anderson. <coughs> Uh, next item is the approval of the minutes. So moved. Second. Uh, would like to note that uh, the roll call shows that Ben, Viol ben Viola's name was not on the roll call list, and Ben was here and present at the last meeting. So if you'd make that note. Are there any other corrections or um, on? all those in favor of approval of the minutes? I'm going to stay since I was not here for a majority. Okay. Uh, five in favor, one abstention. Rob McSorley. I think Mr. Carroll didn't. Did you vote as well? Yes, he did. He did. Yes. Oh, he did. Yeah. Okay. Next item is the superintendent's operations report. I will. Uh, I will go down through and sort of read off the highlights from his report. Um, just to summarize activities during the past month. And I'll ask you to uh, reserve your questions uh, until next month when David is back. Uh, monthly report of operations. Um, copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of December is included in the packet. The average effluent flow for the month was 1.35 million gallons per day. The effluent quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 96% BOD removal and 98% uh, TSS removal for the month. And the average effluent concentration was 10 milligrams per liter and 7 milligrams per liter, respectively. Um, attached to this re uh, report is the annual summary of our operations. Last year, we treated 455 million gallons of wastewater from which we removed 95% and 97% of BOD in total suspended solids. Um, and uh, there's a summary of the past year uh, included which uh, showed us the breakdowns of BOD uh, and, and TSS in the influent and the removal percentages for those. Um, and uh, David notes that there's an uh, increase in the inf influent concentrations um, and that the removal concentrations remain consistent percentage-wise. Uh, the solid waste compost annual report uh, was also attached. Last year, we generated 3,768 cubic yards of compost. Um, the pump station uh, pump plug histories uh, were also included for the past year. Uh, we had a total of eight events of plug pumps at our pump stations, none of which were attributable to wipes, which had been a significant problem for us in previous years, and we had instituted a program to try to discourage the, uh, the, the disposal of wipes um, to the sewer system, and apparently that's, that's been effective. So we, I guess we have to give our staff a pat on the back for that. Um, pump station flows, a copy of the pump station flows for the month of December are included in the packet. We continue to have high flows at the Industrial Park and Libby Road pump stations. 
Again, it appears that these flows occur during wet weather events and the district is still looking uh, for the cause of these increased flows during those events. So during this coming year, we'll have ongoing uh, inspections and investigations to try and determine what the, uh, what the source of that uh, increased flow would be. Um, sludge press feed pumps. We, re we recently sold two press feed pumps that had been taken out of service and replaced by two lower horsepower power pumps. Uh, we sold these pumps through a web-based company called Bid, Bid on Equipment, and for the two pumps, uh, the district received $11,545. Um, the Jetsy 12-week wastewater operating, operator training school, um, Josh Tomes is attending Jetsy's new 12-week operator training sc school. Uh, this is a course that Jetsy recently developed in response to the need for training of new operators. And Dave will be conducting uh, training at this facility for one of the days during February. Um, if anybody has any questions on those, um, you, can, you can bring those to Dave uh, tomorrow or when he returns to work after his illness um, or hold them until our next meeting and ask him then. I'd encourage you to give him a call at the office or send him an email with an inquiry so that he can address it while it's fresh on his mind. All right. Um, Mr. Chairman, just a comment. Yes. Uh, again, just to reiterate, kudos to uh, the staff. Again, a lot of PR and work was gone into the uh, issue that we have with wipes, and a great job with getting that information out. Obviously, it made a big difference. Thank you. Um, okay, the next item is correspondence. Um, we have um, received the attached audit engagement letter from Willett & Associates who will begin their on-site audit of our financials on February 20th. As in the past, Willett & Associates will make a presentation to the board once complete. So we'll get the annual audit report from them. They'll come and present uh, and answer any questions that the report raises in our minds. Um, and, uh, and we'll be able to deal with any, any issues that, that they might raise. Typically, we come through with a fairly clean audit report, so there generally aren't too many major issues that we've had to deal with. Um, and I anticipate the same this year. Um, the second item of correspondence um, was an ability to serve letter that was provided um, for 84 proposed apartment units at 79 Mussey Road. Which is here somewhere. We have a copy handy. It's a one-page letter, basically. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, this is a letter dated January 5th um, to Mr. Anderson. Um, confirming that the district has the ability to collect, convey, and treat the wastewater from a proposed 84-unit apartment complex at 79 Mussey Road. Uh, this lot is within the Eight Corners Sewer District, and there's a flow allocation of, for one single-family dwelling on the, on the lot. Um, thus, 83 of the apartments are subject to the district's capacity reserve fee. The current capacity reserve fee per dwelling unit is $3,061.53 and is adjusted monthly based on the Engineering News Record Construction Cost Index. Please note that this letter does not state that the district has taken final action on this project or that you have received final approval from the Scarborough Sanitary District. The approval of this project is subject to the Board of Trustees review and approval of the final design. Let me know if and when you'd like to take this project to the board for their consideration. This is a project that will be submitted and reviewed through the town's um, planning zoning ordinances and will be um, heard by the planning board and we will deal with, as we typically do, the
permits for uh, sewer on this project. So, uh, that was a, a letter in the first step to sort of get the, get the process rolling for the applicant because they couldn't proceed to the planning board without knowing that the, the district had the capacity to um, accept that flow if we choose to do that in the future. So is there a typo in Mr. Anderson that should that be someone else? That maybe doesn't. Well, that, this letter was sent to him through his engineering consultant. Okay. So, so he has the one on Muzzy Road? I, I thought that was someone else. Uh, I think Mr. Anderson could be an employee at, at oh, um, okay. Tobago. Tobago Technics. Okay. So when the superintendent returns, we can ask him that question, or you can send him an email, and he'll, con he'll confirm that for you. Okay. Do we know who the owner of this? It's not intended to be me. I can tell you that. <laughs> oh no, it's spelled differently. No, Mr. Chairman, do we know the owner of the project? Um, that might be the Mr. Anderson. No, we don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's a secret, but we don't have any direct. We don't have any direct communication right. identifying the uh, the individuals. All right. Uh, there is no old business. New business. Um, we have the award of a bid on a one-ton plow truck. And in the packets, there is a summary of the of the bids received. I'm shuffling too much paper here. But I know I've got it somewhere. There we go. It's right on the. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, it was included in the uh, in the notes. So on page two and three, we have the superintendent's summary of the bid. On January 19th, we opened bids for the replacement of our 2006 plow truck. A total of 11 requests were sent out. Four bids were received. Acceptable bids were for four. XLT F450 HD or a Dodge SLT 4500 HD with a dump body, plow, and sander. The lowest net bid, which includes the trade-in value, was for $40,099 from Central Maine Dodge. Our approved budget for this truck was $60,000, and the superintendent is recommending award of this bid to the low bidder, Central Maine Dodge, for $40,099. So moved. Moved by Nick. Is there a second? Second by Rob. Questions or comments? It's good because I can't answer. Uh, all those in favor? None opposed. Thank you. Back to you. I think I can go back to my list here. Okay. Um, next item is. Corrective discharge of an assessment in lien at 20 property at 20 Black Point Road. Um, due to a Scribner's error, the original discharge of, lien, of, no, of notice of lien recorded in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds referenced the wrong book and page of the original lien. Um, Superintendent is recommending approval of the corrective discharge of the assessment and lien for 20 Black Point Road. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. So this is a, basically this is a clerical error. The lien was, the lien, the, the amounts that, that the lien uh, was securing had been paid. I think a lien was released but referred to the wrong book and page number. So we're just filing a corrective document to make sure that the title is clear and that the corrected, that the lien release refers to the right book and page number for the previously filed documents. Um, so if there's no, we have a no, we have a motion to approve and a second. All those in favor? All in favor, none opposed. Thank you. The next item is the release of easement Risbara Clearview Condominium <coughs> Association. Um, 
This is an easement that um, is along Clearview Condominium Association property running parallel to Easton Road, and it um, and it contains an a sewer line that was abandoned in place. Um, the intent of this request is to discontinue the district's interest in the lien, releasing it back to, um, I believe, the Condominium Association. However, I'm going to ask that we table this until our next meeting because the superintendent told me that, uh, that the town had expressed a concern or an interest in the release of this lien and he was not able to give me any details on what the issue really was. Um, and so I thought it would be prudent to table this, let him work with the town to clarify um, any concerns that are there, and then we can bring this back for consideration at the next meeting. I don't think there was any urgency uh, associated with action on this, so I don't think the delay uh, until our next meeting would, dis, uh, would, would be an inconvenience to any of the parties. So if I could have a motion to table. So moved. In the second? Second. Oh. Jason, second by Jason. Thank you. Um, no discussion of a tabling motion. All in favor of tabling? None opposed. Okay, the table and tap restaurant. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. I have a potential conflict of interest as I work for the firm that uh, is supporting this application and I'd like to recuse myself. Um, yeah, without objection, I think you, sh you shall abstain from discussion on this item. All right, in our packets we have uh, notes from the superintendent on this proposal. On behalf of Dunstan Properties LLC, Sebago Technics is requesting district approval for a proposed 92-seat restaurant. The proposed restaurant will discharge into the recently approved Phase 4 sewer system for Dunstan Village. The restaurant will utilize an external grease trap as depicted in the submitted drawings. The requested flow was for 1,972 gallons per day based on main subsurface rural design flows. These flows represent a max, maximum day condition. However, the sanitary district approvals are based on a 90 uh, average daily flow. Thus, the wastewater the average daily flow is estimated at 986 gallons per day. Superintendent recommends approval with the following conditions. Capacity reserve fees. The capacity reserve fee is based on typical wastewater characteristics. However, the characteristic of the restaurant's wastewater is expected to be 1.7 times greater than typical wastewater. With that, a high strength multiplier of 1.7 times the restaurant waste is applied. The, com the current capacity reserve fee is $15.31 per gallon and is adjusted monthly based on the Engineering News Records Construction Cost Index. Based on the current ENR index, the total capacity reserve fee due is $23,213.02. The capacity reserve fee is due prior to issuance of the sewer permit any wastewater discharge above the approved discharge limitations are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. And he shows the calculations in a table. Uh, wastewater discharge limitations. The wastewater discharge is limited in accordance to the following table. Any future flows in excess of the approved limitations are subject to additional approvals and fees. And the limits are average daily flow, 986 gallons per day. BOD 2.8 pounds per day, COD 8.39 pounds per day, total suspended solids 2.8 pounds per day. <coughs> Signatures, all district applications must be signed by the owner, not an agent. Detectable underground utility marking and tracing wire, all sewer piping shall have detectable underground utility marking tape and tracer wire in accordance with district standards. 
sewer permit, a sewer permit is required, grease trap, a grease interceptor permit is required, a completed application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no grease trap work shall be completed. Food strainers, inline food strainers are required downstream from any garbage disposal, food macerator, or similar equipment that allows food waste to flow into the sewer. Sampling requirements, monthly composite samples of the combined wastewater is required of which will be tested for BOD, COD, total suspended solids, ammonia, and pH. Data must be provided to the district monthly. The superintendent has the right to modify this sampling program as needed to ensure representable data is obtained. Record plans, professionally surveyed electronic georeference CAD drawings, a stamped PDF of the CAD drawing and a stamped paper copy is to be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. So move with the stipulated conditions. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions or discussion? Nick. Mr. Chairman, um, I'm, oh, I'm okay with all the conditions. The one that I'm a little concerned about is the sampling requirements. This is one of the new policies for the district. And um, the concern I have is that the sampling requirements are done or monthly, and that's more than we've ever asked anybody else to do that I know of. And I think the frequency of sampling is a little excessive. Uh, I think we should have a discussion for uh, at a later time when the superintendent is around just to see if there's a way to um, maybe uh, modify that so it isn't open-ended, indefinite, on a monthly basis, you know that. Yeah, my my understanding is that um, the applicant is aware of this schedule that the superintendent uh, wants to see what the initial data is trending into, and that they will modify the um, period of the testing based on what the initial results are. So I think the superintendent is intending to. Um, take a look at the first few months of sampling and then expects that there will be modifications made. That's why that's why he's asked us um, to allow him to retain the right to modify the program as needed. So if if he thinks he can get representable data with less frequent monitoring, I think I think his inclination is going to be to do that. But we can have that we can have that discussion with him. Sure. Um, and I'd suggest uh, that we just talk with him at the next meeting about it. We can put an agenda item on. And Wendy, if you'd make a note um, to put an agenda item on just to discuss um, the, the practice of the scheduling of, of uh, data collection um, as was raised by the tap and tables review so that we can just follow up with that at the next, at the next meeting. That's fine. That'd be fine? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or concerns? All right. Do we have a motion? We have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Um, all, um, all in favor, one abstention. Rob McSorley abstaining. Thank you. Okay, items E and F are um, executive sessions to discuss real estate, potential real estate transactions pursuant to Title I MRSA Section 4056C. Um, so we will be recessing to executive session to return uh, back to complete our meeting agenda. So moved. Motion to recess to executive session. Motion. Second. Second. Moved by Rob, second by Nick. All in favor? None opposed. We'll be meeting um, in the town manager's conference room.